everyone. Welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or the Facebook group, and I post videos every Tuesday and Thursday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. This video is going to be part two to our summer Bible study, which is on the gospel according to John. And Tuesday, we started our Bible study. But you guys who watch it strictly on YouTube will see those videos every Thursday and Friday. Today we are diving into part 2 of chapter 1 of John. We only got through 8 verses in our last 2 hour session which is insane and that tells you just how much information is packed in this book. Like the Gospel of John is seriously phenomenal. So what I'm going to do right now is quickly pray us in and then we're going to move along but i'm first going to start my timer i have it set for two hours because i want to make sure that i'm within the time frame so i'm going to quickly pray us in and then we're going to dive in so heavenly father we thank you for waking us up this morning and giving us a fresh breath of air father god i ask that you come into this bible study and really just allow your word to sear into our minds that way we may be able to meditate on the word father god we understand from part one of the study that we focused on your son jesus christ and him being the word and how the word how the word was with you at the beginning and how the word is also you in this section or part of the study father god i ask that you allow us to be able to have the revelation further about your word father god as well as the witness of who the word was god i ask that you touch each one of these women and men who watch this video on youtube or in the facebook group that they may be able to feel your presence and seek your word more father god amen so that was a quick prayer um so you guys know i still do get nervous when i have to pray out loud um it freaks me out a lot i prefer to write my prayers so speaking out my prayers when they're not written is a little scary <laughs> for me but like i said um we did verses one through eight so today um my goal is to do verses nine to twenty eight um let me get this in frame so yeah my goal is to do verses nine to twenty eight but we'll see um with the two hour frame that we have going on if you guys want to understand all the notes that I have going on, definitely check out part one. You can just click the eye on the screen over here. But, okay, so what I am using. So, sorry about my hand. <laughs> the Bible I'm using is the single column journaling Bible in the black. Looks like that. It's the ESV from Crossway. The pen that I'm using for this study is the Zebra f301 ballpoint pen it is a 0 0.7 millimeter i love my 0.7s and my 0.5s they're like my favorite pens ever um so that's what i'm using to highlight i am using a number of things so i have some of these crayola super tips i love these things they're awesome i have some of the crayola twistable colored pencils because they're also awesome the sharpie smear guard highlighters i use the one that don't have the clips on them because I know they're like our different ones. They're all smear guard, but these are the ones I use are cheaper. And then I have my pack of mild liners. I have all three packs in front of me. Um, this one is the cool pack though. One of my favorite packs because it has that gorgeous gray, that gorgeous green, and then this gorgeous purple. Um, post-it wise, I'm gonna I went back into my little post-it collection and took out some ODs and some new ones. So this one here is an old one that I got from the Target Dollar Spot like years ago, you guys. Like I'm talking about 2012, 2013 years ago. Um then I have these right here. These are the ready tag post-its. Yeah, they're called ready tag. Um and I like these because they do have the little tabs on the side, but I have them just in case I need space. I have my Dollar Tree ones that I just recently picked up that I've been on the hunt for. So never stop looking up in a cloud and then create your own sunshine. I have those two here. And then lastly, I have this little pack here that I got um, off of Etsy. I got it off of Etsy from um, the UK. I know that for a fact. But um, it's just birds and florals. So I have that. These post-its here, um, these are just regular post-it notes. And then this one is the unicorn emoji that I got from Walmart. So, that's that. And this is just paper that I glued into the actual Bible. If you guys can see here, it's glued in. You can click the eye on the screen to check out that video on how to add paper to your Bible. But, oh, and then this one here is just, um, this is just regular, uh, list note paper, 
a note paper pad that I just um, taped in with washi tape and this is not as straight as I want it to be but I'll fix it later but um okay so we're gonna dive in starting by reading paragraph by paragraph um, so I'm gonna read verses 9 through 13 together let me make sure this is zoomed in enough and it's completely autofocused I don't want it to be too blurry but um, normally the process I do the first step is read it through the second step will be to circle the words that I wanted to find hence you see these two words already circled from when I did part one um, after I do that I go in a, a third time for step I mean, I, I go in a second time for step three to read, and as I read, I make my markings, whether it's underlining, starring, bracketing, boxing, whatever, and make my notes and add color to make everything pretty. Pretty much the method that I use. And let's just dive in. Don't want this to be too long. So, starting at verse nine. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So, again, I already circled receive. I already defined it. So, that word here is here. So, the Greek word for receive is paralambano. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but it means to admit acknowledge to take to or to join to oneself so now that i have that defined we can now go in with our note taking and if i pause it's only just to check on um my computer because i am casting my camera to my computer to make sure everything is in frame so we are at verse nine in our study so the first thing i'm going to underline is the true light and as I'm altering this, let me make sure everything is fine. Okay, yeah. So the first thing I'm going to do is underline the true light. And then I'm also going to underline, which gives light to everyone, as a separate thing. So I have the true light underlined, and then which gives light to everyone. So I'm going to figure out what colors I want to use. I think I want to use these two colors. No, I don't. I don't want to use those colors, but I do want to use this pink. So the true light here. Then I want to use this blue here from the Zebra Mount Zebra Mount Liner pack. So hopefully you guys can see this. But I'm using this gorgeous blue here. And this is a double-ended um, highlighter. So you have your regular chisel tip here and then your fine points here. So, which gives light to everyone. So I'm going to put my notes on this little handy paper here that I have in the book. I probably should have added two sheets. I'm probably going to have to add a second sheet, but we'll see. But um, So I'm going to write verse 9 box it and then use this color here that I used to underline the actual true light because this note is for that sentence okay so the true light basically Christ is the light of the world the genuine one that illuminates our path to God he radiates all that God is so that's exactly what I'm going to write so again Christ is the light of the world. The genuine one that illuminates And for those who um, want to get the PDF file of the live notes and are not in the Facebook group, I did make a Google Drive so that you guys would be able to still um, take part and get the notes. So if you look in the description box, there will be a link down below to where you can get all of the printables for the John Bible study. So, okay, so the genuine one that illuminates our path to God.
and he radiates all that God is. Okay, so I do have cross references for that. So I have John eight twelve and first John two eight. And then I'm gonna also write B9 again for verse nine and then use this highlighter to mark it. And we'll get to that in a second. So that's basically the note. Christ is the light of the world, the genuine one that illuminates our path to God, and he radiates all that God is. So that's what that what I get personally from when I see the true light. Um, so again, John 8 and 12. So let me flip to John 8 and 12. So 8 and 12 is down here, and it says, Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Who, who's, whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So that's the first cross-reference. And the second one I had was 1 John 2, 8. And what you will notice is I have a lot of cross-references to all the books that John himself wrote. So I think that it's great that John is basically proving himself within his scriptures. So hopefully you guys can see this. Um, 2.8 is here. It says, At the same time, it is a new commandment that I am writing to you, which is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. So that's just a cross-reference to understand the true light. And then for the portion that says, um, which gives light to everyone, basically we are born into a world with love, care, and goodness because of Jesus. This is also offered to everyone, those in Israel and the Gentiles, believers and non-believers. He reveals God to everyone. So, um, you know, the light of life, he doesn't just give it to those who listen to all of his commands. He offers it to everyone. It's just up to us whether we accept that light or not. But he does reveal God to us all. He gives everyone that, um, that light, that love, that care. So... I'm going to write He reveals God to all people not just a specific group and I think that's crucial to keep in mind because a lot of us um, who are Christians tend to look down on those who are non-believers or we even look down on other Christians when they make a mistake but we need to realize that we don't have that authority to judge people we don't have that power or right to judge people we are all seen equally in the eyes of God the way God sees me and the way God sees a murderer is literally on the same level um, to us it seems like you know a murderer is worse off than us but no sin is greater than the next sin um, it doesn't matter how much you sin, how little you sin. A sin is a sin, period, across the board. And um, Jesus reveals God to everyone, whether you're a mature believer, a new believer, or an unbeliever. He reveals it to everyone, but the choice is ours to really make um, a way for that revelation to seep in. We must study his word and communicate in conversation with him through prayer. We must um, show love to others. Like we need, There are certain things that we must do, but um, Jesus himself reveals it to everyone. There is no specific group of people that he reveals God to. So I think that's something crucial to keep in mind. And I have cross-references for that, which are Isaiah 49 and 6 and 1 John again 2.8. Which I don't have to read because we already read it before. But I will read Isaiah uh, 49 and 6. So Isaiah 49 and 6. Is it 49 and 6? Did I write the right? I want to make sure I wrote the right one. I think it is. Okay. Okay. Yes, so, 49 and 6 is here. It says, he says, 
it is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to bring the preserved of Israel. I will make you as a light for the nations that my salvation my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. So he didn't say a light for a nation, a night a light for, you know, three or four nations. No, he said a light for the nations. Sorry about that, I had got interrupted by my little sister. She asked the question. But um, yeah, you know, he didn't say for one specific nation, and then he didn't say for a specific area. He said to reach the end of the earth. So the end of the earth meaning everyone on this earth. Um, so that just goes to prove that he reveals it to everyone again. All right. So going back to the scriptures was coming into the world so moving on to verse 10 um he was in the world so i am going to underline he was in the world the world was made through him i'm going to underline that yet the world did not know him i'm also going to underline that so as you can see one verse can have many different points to it when you go verse by verse, which is why I'm really such a fan of doing a verse by verse study because it offers so much insight um, when you really pick apart the verse and understand the context of the verse. So, let's get some color. I can use these colors that I picked out. Yay! <laughs> So I'm taking this kind of like mint green, I guess you would say. I don't even know what color it's going to pop up as. Yeah, some mint kind of pale green. I'm going to take this baby blue here. That's a pretty blue. It truly is. I'm not sure if it's coming up on camera perfectly. But the next thing I'm going to take is orange. Because I don't use a lot of orange yet. So I'm taking this Sharpie Smear God Highlighter. And underlining that so that I know. So, writing those notes, um, wow, running out of space. Um, I'm just gonna continue writing my notes here, and if I run out of space, then oh well. But uh, this is verse 10. So, um, he was in the world, is what that first portion says. Basically, he existed before the world and then came into the world as flesh. So, he existed before the world entered. as flesh and we know this again from Genesis 1 26 because if we go back go back back to the beginning of the Bible to Genesis 1 26 gotta move my highlighters out the way so I can show you guys so 126 down here says then God said let us make man in our image after our likeness um, so he's saying us our and our so obviously there's not just one person. So if we go up to the top where it says Genesis 1 and 2, um, it says at the end of verse 2, it says, And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. So verse 1, 1, I mean Genesis 1 and 1 says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And when you go down here, it says, Let us make man in our image. So if we go back to Genesis 1 and 1, I mean John 1 and 1, it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So now we understand that there were three beings. There was God, there was His Spirit, 
and then there was his word. Um, so we know that the word is Jesus Christ. We know that his spirit is the Holy Spirit. So now we're having an understanding that this hour and us that God had referred to, he was speaking to Jesus as the word and the Holy Spirit at this time. So we now see that he existed before the world and entered as flesh. Moving on to the second half where it says the world was made through him. Basically, it's the same idea as I said um, in verse 3. Up here it says, um, well if we read verse 3, it says verse 3, all things were made through him and without him was not anything made that was made. I'm sorry, you guys can't see that. So all things were made through him and without him was not anything made that was made. So my note for verse 3 reads as follows. The word equals Jesus, so I'm now understanding that this word is Jesus Christ. Je this is now telling me that Jesus is the creator and source of all things. Nothing can be made apart from him. The word is uncreated and existed before everything. And then I said that God created all things through his word. So not only did he exist before the world, but he was the creator and source of all. So I'm going to write C note for verse 3. It's pretty much simple um, as that. And again, check out the printable if you want to see what that note for verse 3 is if you missed part 1. Um, but if you're watching this, then you should have already seen part 1. So, back to the last portion of verse 10. Where it says, yet the world did not know him. I'm sorry, you guys, my arm is all in the way. I'm trying to get everything together. But, um, okay, so this basically shows how deeply fallen um, the humans were, humankind was. Their very flesh, fleshly nature rejects him, which in turn rejects God. They understand his deity and his divine character, but they choose to stay in their comfort zone of sin. They did not want to submit to the authority of God in Christ. So, um, I know that's a handful, so I'm going to write it out. And sorry if you hear my chair moving. But um, I zoomed in close enough so you guys can like really see the notes that I'm writing. Even though you can just print them out. But um, Shows how deeply... So it shows how deeply humans had fallen because um, they did not know him. So if you don't know him, that means you didn't spend time with him. And if you didn't spend time with him, that basically means that um, you have no relationship with him. So... They were too comfortable in their sins to um, to know him. And what I mean by that is the Ten Commandments were created so that people would know that they're sinning. But in turn, the Ten Commandments ended up making others begin to judge those who did those sins. And they made them feel um, superior to the ones who did break those commandments, which should not have been the case. So because their sin wasn't on those Ten Commandments, they felt like they were better than other people, which then allows them to be comfortable in whatever sin that they were committing that wasn't on that list. So I hope that just made sense. <laughs> but um, the cross reference I have for that is First John three and one. And again, John is just proving himself with his own scripture. 
see where I went first John. So three and one is here. It says, see what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God so we are the reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. So um, the world is not going to know who we are because they don't know who God, um, Jesus is. And because they don't know who Jesus is, they're going to look at us and not really know who we are. I don't know if you've ever had a friend who um, tries to bring you back to your old ways. Like, I remember when you used to do this, or you ain't never used to do this, or, you know, remember that time we did such and such and such, and you don't do that anymore? Um, they don't know the new you in Christ. They know the old you that, I'm not going to say rejected Christ, but that ignored Christ. They don't know the you who is um, submitting to the authority of God that is in Christ. So, just, that that's something I thought was profound. Okay. So, moving on to verse 11, and I'm hoping the lighting is great for you guys. Let me quickly... I'm trying to get the lighting as best as possible. Hopefully that works. But, um, diving into 11 now. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. So I'm underlining he came to his own as one. And then I'm also going to underline his own people did not receive him. Taking a Crayola Twistable colored pencil to do some markings now I like to alternate depending on how I feel um, color wise like whatever color I feel gravitates towards me or pulls me in is what I use at that point in time but I try to make it a mixture of colors and not just one array of colors so I probably won't be using green for a while because I have a lot of green so far but um that's that so I am going to write my notes um, I don't even know where to put my notes because uh, I'm running out of space. Like, this is the dilemma when you're really studying the Word of God. So, I'm just going to use this here um, to do my notes. So, that's verse 11, right? First things first is I'm going to rip this. You can just cut it off or keep it, but I don't want it on my page. So I'm just going to rip this off. Again, you can cut it, but I'm going old school and ripping it. <laughs> so verse 11, like I said. And marking it with this magenta for the first portion. So he came to his own. He came to his own. So basically Jesus came to the very people he created at the beginning of creation. Um, the very people that he helped create. The very people that um, he watched over from his seat with God. He came to those very people to help them. So... Jesus came to the very people he created. Again, Genesis 126, because God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. So he came to the people who he created to be like him and the Father, but these people just did not know who he was. Um, so, going to verse 11 where it says, his people did not receive him. Basically, the people did not accept him knowing who he was. They chose to continue living in sin rather than be changed.
and receive if we understand again going back to the Greek definition um, if I can get this in frame receive means to admit acknowledge take to or join to oneself so therefore they did not acknowledge him and chose to continue living in their sin. So that's that. Moving on to verse 12. But to all who did receive him, so to all who did receive him, Who believed in his name he gave the right to become children of God um, have my colors going on so I use pink uh, purple and blue sorry if you hear a lot of squeaking I'm trying to get comfortable in my seat <laughs> um, so verse 12 here okay and I use blue so So all who did receive him, um, the ones who received him are the ones who didn't reject him, but rather embraced him in the truth. So these are the ones that embraced him. Sorry if you hear that outside. Somebody's mowing their lawn outside. Embraced him. And the truth acknowledged him. Believed in his name. So our belief in Jesus grants us a special access. Um, and it gives us a privilege many people don't have, such as eternal life and access to the Father. So, I have first John three and twenty three and then five 
13 as cross references. So again, for the portion that reads, um, believes in his name, our belief in him, him being Jesus Christ, grants us special access and gives us a privilege many people don't have, such as eternal life and access to the Father. Cross references are 1 John 3 and 23. So 3 and 23 reads, this is his commandment that we believe in his name, I'm sorry, this, and this is his commandment that we believe in the name of his son Jesus Christ and love one another just as he commanded us to. So in essence we're commanded to believe in the name of Jesus Christ, we're commanded to believe in Jesus as a being, as a whole, as the word of God, as the truth, as the light. Um, but these people didn't know him because they chose to reject him. So the next one is 513, which is here and it says, I write these things to you, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. So believing in his name gives you eternal life. Um, so that's that. So... He gave the right to become children of God, is what we're going to focus on now. So basically, um, this is basically the spiritual adoption that is promised to all believers. I have Matthews 5 and 45, Romans 8, 14 to 16, Galatians 3, 26, 1 John 3, 1, and 1 John 5, 1. So, starting off with Matthew 5 and 45. I need to fix this because it's irritating me. So, Matthew 5 and 45. And it reads here, So that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven, for he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. So really it's just that first portion where it just says, so that you may be sons of your father who is in heaven, or in our case, daughters. Moving on to Romans uh, 8 and 14 through 16. Um, really, it's really going to be 12 through 17, which talks about us being heirs of Christ, um, heirs with Christ. But starting at 14, it says, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons or daughters of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption. And spirit is capitalized, so that means the Holy Spirit of adoption as sons or daughters, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, and heirs of God, and fellow heirs with Christ, or co-heirs, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. So this is all just proving the whole point of um, how, we are being give, how we are going to be given the right to become children of God if we believe in him. There's a lot that comes with believing in the name of Jesus Christ. Not just eternal life, but to get that eternal life, you now are spiritually adopted as a child of God. You are a co-heir in the inheritance with Christ. But along with that, there are things that you must do. Once you become a co-heir and a child of God, you're going to suffer. It is inevitable. It's what it is. It's going to happen. It's a part of that walk. That's just how it goes. But um, moving on to 
13. So, okay. So, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So, I'm going to underline all of this, but I'm separating it into two. So, the first portion is who were born not of blood, nor of will of the flesh, nor of the will of man. And then um, I'm going to also underline, actually I'm going to box, but of God, because I think that's important to know. What's the time? Okay, an hour and 28 minutes. We're doing good so far. Taking this yellow. Verse 13. Probably should have picked another color, but who cares? So again, that portion that says, Who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man. Basically, the nature of our spiritual adoption is not of human effort or achievement. It's not of human sacrifices or even our genealogy. You cannot think your way into it because it's beyond your own efforts it cannot even be forced upon us or even encouraged so um the nature of spiritual adoption is not of human effort or achievement sacrifice or genealogy It's not because of our own efforts. Um, and then it goes and says, but of God, right? So, we are born in again by God through the blood of Jesus by his power and work alone it only comes from God so spiritual adoption only comes by way of Christ by God through Christ I hope that just made sense it sounded perfect in my head but um through the blood of Jesus By God's power and work alone. I have cross references which are Deuteronomy thirty two eighteen, first Peter one and three and verse twenty three. And then I have 1st John again. You're going to see a lot of 1st John. So again, John is just proving himself. So going back to Deuteronomy. And let me quickly plug up my phone to charge because it's going to die in the midst of recording. Where is it at?
I'm just plugging it in. Okay. I have it plugged in now. But I'm um, moving to Deuteronomy 32 and 8. Let's just put that bookmark down. So Deuteronomy 32 and 8. I'm sorry, 32, 18. Um, you were mindful. I'm sorry, you were unmindful of the rock that bore you. And you forgot the God who gave you birth. So um, this is a, a, a earthly birth as well as a spiritual birth. Um, because God did create all of mankind. But um, also a spiritual birth because... You know, they, they forgot who he was. Then we have First Peter. One and three. Which is here. Okay, guys. So the camera had cut off. But um, the second cross-reference was First Peter. I totally skipped the cross references, the rest of the cross references for verse 12, but whatever. Um, verse Peter 1, 3, and then 23. So 1 and 3 reads, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Christ. I'm sorry, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And then also 23 down here reads, since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God. Um, and then the last one is First John 2 and 29. Which is over here and it says, if you know that the, I'm sorry, if you know that he is righteous, you may be sure that everyone who practices righteousness has been born of him. So this is all about the children of God. Moving to verse 14. Yeah, so we're done with that. So now what I'm going to do is read through verse 14 through 18. Okay. So, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Glory is the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks before me because he was before me. For from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen... Yeah, God. Sorry. Verse 18. No one has ever seen God, but only God. I'm sorry. I don't know why I keep messing that verse up. No one has ever seen God, the only God, who is at the Father's side. He has made him known. So that is the last four verses of this part, which is all about the word. So um, now we're going to... Well, I circled. The word that I circled was dwelt. So dwelt, the Greek word is skino, which means to have one's tent and camp to reside or to occupy. So, moving along, I'm going to do verse 14, um, and then I'm going to underline the word became flesh, dwelt among us. glory as of the only son from the father sorry and then i'm going to underline full of grace and truth so um all in verse 14 so i have the word became flesh dwelt among us glory as the only son from the father and then full of grace and truth those are the points that i have so now we're going to get to underlining So 
Worlds Among Us. Full of Grace and Truth. The Word Became Flesh. Glory as of the only Son from the Father. So the Word Became Flesh, verse 14. And again, that's in gray. So I'm just going to mark it with this. Basically, he came to earth to be with us and reconcile us back to God. God himself decided he wanted to be closer to us. God the Son entered the domain of humanity. He truly embodied God, yet clothed himself in humanity. So... God the Son entered the domain of humanity. To reconcile us. He truly embodied. God. Yet clothe himself and humanity. And what I mean by that is that he came to earth, into this human domain, as a human being with all power. Yet he never once took that power and used it for his own purpose. I'm sure the people that were beating him um, 33 times or 33 plus times... He could have easily snapped his finger, smited them, whatever the case, but he dealt with that. He took those beatings, he took the rumors and the gossip, and the people looked at him like, he's, like he was crazy. Like He took all of that, and instead of using the power that God gave him, he clothed himself in humanity. He was able to feel and be emotional, and I think that was key to him being able to reconcile us back, because... um. He knew what it meant to suffer, which means that we can relate to him who then relates to God. So the cross references, I have quite a few cross references for this one. I am not going to write them all down, but I will list a few. So I have um, Romans 1 and 3. I have Galatians 4 and 4. Philippians 2, 7, 8, Colossians 1 and 22, and I'll do one more. Um, let's do 1 John 4 and 2. Mm -hmm. So, just a few. I literally have like 6 or 8, 9 cross references for this but um we're just gonna dive through these so going to romans one and three. Oh, i'm so sorry you heard that i <laughs> just hit the mic so um one and three concerning his son who was descended from david according to the flesh and was declared to be the son of god in power according to the spirit of holiness by his resurrection from the dead Jesus Christ our Lord so again he came to us in flesh but he was of spirit he had the power of God next I have Galatians 4 and 4 I can't remember if Galatians before Ephesians yes it is always get that confused so 
so 4 and 4 is here. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoptions as son. Okay. So that talks about Jesus again coming into the domain of humanity. The word became flesh. Then we have Philippians 2, 7, 8. Um, but empty, okay, I'm going to go back to verse 6. Who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. So this is showing how, you know, Jesus was humble in coming to the earth as a servant of God. Um, though he still had power, the same power of, as God, he came as a servant of God, humbled himself, and was able to live among humans. Um, Colossians... 1 and 22, which is down here, I think it's 22, right? Yes, 22. Um, he has now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him. And the last cross reference I'm going to read is for um, John, 1 John 4 and 2. Get this in frame. Um, by this you know. The Spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in flesh, is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard, was coming and is now in the world already. So, again, this is all just proving of him coming to the world as flesh. Um, and then, moving on to the second portion, which is um, dwelt among us. So he lived with us on earth and dealt with the same things we deal with. He can empathize and sympathize um, with us through Christ and he being God. So um, God came in the form of Jesus or Jesus is a form of God. So Jesus came to earth. He dealt with what, the same things we dealt with, which then allows him to um, God to empathize and sympathize with us through Christ. This connects Jesus to humanity. Um, so. God, through Christ, can empathize and sympathize Jesus is all powerful. Um, so this is a shorthand of my notes, but the full note that I have written on the printable is he lived with us on earth and dealt with the same things we deal with. God can empathize and sympathize with us through Christ. This connects Jesus to humanity. Other, tra other translations, sorry, other translations may read that he tabernacled with us, meaning that his flesh was a tent for God to reside, to have God's presence among us rather than in a temple or an ark. And if you guys don't know, they had the ark, um, I think it's called the Ark of the Covenant of the, or the Ark of God. Um, I'm reading about it in Joshua how they had to carry this ark quite often um, and that God that ark had the presence of God but the presence of God now dwells within Jesus who is basically um, a tent of sort of the spirit and presence of God and was able to walk among the people so I have Revelation 715 as a cross-reference And also 21 and 3.
So Revelation 7 and 15. Fifteen says, therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple and he who sits on the throne will shelter him with his presence. Is that the right cross reference? That's the way my cross references be all over the place. Yes it is. So um, that's just basically talking about um, the temple but we didn't have this kind of temple back um, nowadays. We have Jesus Christ who is the temple of um, God. And 21 and three twenty one and three is here it says um, and I heard a loud voice from the throne saying behold the dwelling place of God is with man he will dwell with them and they will be his people and God himself with them as their God so, again, God came in the form of Jesus to earth. He dwelt with us. He lived among us. Um, he interacted with all types of people and was able to understand us. So, Glory as the only Son from the Father. His glory echoes that of the glory of God. Simple as that, I mean... His glory echoes that of God. Luke nine thirty two. Second Peter one sixteen to seventeen. I am getting a call. I can't answer that. I'm sorry, you guys. Let me just text my fiance. Okay. Um, what else? What else? What else? First John one and one, and then four and fourteen. Oh, so again, Luke 9.32, so we're going to jump into that right now. Luke 9 and 32, it says, Now Peter and those who were with him were heavy with sleep, but when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Jumping to Second Peter. Peter 1 16 to 17 um, since it is written you shall be holy for I am holy and if you call on him as father who judges impartially according to each one's deed conduct yourselves I'm sorry second Peter <laughs> I don't know why I went to first Peter oh lord it's second Peter I knew something was off when I was reading that second Peter 1 16 to 17 for we did not follow cleverly devised myths when he when we made known to you the power and coming of our lord jesus christ but we are eyewitnesses of his majesty for when he received honor and glory from god the father the voice was born to him by the majestic glory this is my beloved son with whom i am well pleased um and then first john one and one Yeah, one and one, I guess, one and one. It says, um, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life. And then four and fourteen. Let me just 
just make sure I'm not getting these cross references confused. No, I'm not. I actually really had that down. Okay. 4 and 14. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. So, um, yeah. Full of grace and truth is the last one. So full of grace and truth. Um, let me move this over some in the camera. Um, in person, I'm sorry, in the person of Jesus, the immeasurable grace of God is treasured up. Pretty much all that I wrote. So. stored up okay so moving on to 15 I'm going to underline where he says he who comes after me ranks before me because he was before me what color I want to use but I guess I'll use pink okay so he who comes after me ranks before me because he was before me so this is a loaded verse if you understand about John the Baptist so um Again, this is not the Apostle John who said this. This is John the Baptist who said this, who we know was the messenger that God had sent to um, bear witness to Jesus and to prepare the people's hearts for Jesus, right? So, he who comes after me ranks before me because he was before me. So, this is kind of a twofold thing. So, he who comes after me, if you guys don't know, um, I mentioned this in part one of the study but um john the baptist is the first cousin of jesus he was born before jesus so he who comes after me right so you have john the baptist being born first and starting his ministry first with baptism correct and then you have jesus coming after him with his ministry and also being born after him so he who comes after me then he says, ranks before me. Um, obviously, Jesus ranks higher. I mean, he is the son of God, whereas John the Baptist was just a messenger of God. Um, the son of God, the messenger of God, mm, son of God definitely ranks before him. And then because he was before me, again, though John the Baptist was physically born before Jesus, Jesus was there at the beginning if we go back into the first verse in the beginning was the word the word was with God the word was God and we understand that the word is Jesus Christ the word and Jesus are a form of God which is why he says he was before me I know that's a lot that I just said and I broke that scripture down but um physically he was the first cousin to Jesus but John the Baptist understood the pre-existence of Jesus is simply all I'm going to say because if I say any more it can get confusing so is this even in frame yes okay John the Baptist
Um, I have Philippians 2 6 as a reference. So Philippians chapter 2 verse 6 and then Colossians chapter 1 verse 19. I have a lot more cross references but they're basically kind of like the same verse written in the other gospels. Which I'm not going to write here but you can always just check it out yourselves. I'm sorry because this is irritating me. I don't like when my paper and my washi tape is not correct. So we're going to fix this right now. Oh, I'm sorry guys. I just knocked down the mic. I just got to get that right because it's irritating as I try to flip. Alright. That is better. I think that's about right. There we go. Okay. Put the mic back where I had it. <laughs> Sorry guys, that was just like irritating me and I mean, it wasn't right and I needed it to be right. But, um, okay. So, he who ranks before me, I'm sorry, he who comes after me ranks before me because he was before me. So, again, John the Baptist was physically born first and had his ministry first, but he understood the power and pre-existence of Jesus. And that goes to Philippians 1, I'm sorry, Philippians 2 and 6. Although he was in the form of God, did not count equal equality with God a thing to be grasped. So again, he understands the power and pre-existence of God through that, um, Jesus through that because Jesus is God. And then for the part where it says ranks before me, I'm going to go read Colossians 1 and 19. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. So I mean... Though he was born before his first cousin, and though he was older, and though his ministry was first, he understood, even though that this was his cousin, he knew that he was the son of God, he knew that the fullness of God rested and lived in him. He saw um, the Holy Spirit rest upon him. Like, he saw these things, which we'll see as we read further um, down the line. But, you know, even though they were first cousins, John the Baptist understood Jesus, not as just his cousin, but who he was in all of his glory. So, moving on to 16. We are almost at the halfway point. <laughs> I'm actually, we are at the halfway point. <laughs> um, 15. For from him, I'm sorry, from, from his fullness, so, for from his fullness, I'm going to underline, for from his fullness, we have all received, I'm going to underline that, and then I'm also going to underline grace upon grace. So, from his fullness, um, which color do I want to use? I don't know. I don't know because I have so many colors in my face. <laughs> I'm just going to go with this gorgeous purple. We have all received grace upon grace. 
and we already know I don't have space on here all right we'll go with this sticking out here Starting with verse 16 here. For from his fullness, basically Jesus was sinless, complete in God and whole. He had a close fellowship with the Father. So therefore he was full, not of himself, but of God's spirit. He was full of God. Um, and we just actually read that in Colossians 1.19. So. Jesus was sinless. Full of God. And whole. Colossians one nineteen Ephesians one twenty three as well as three nineteen and four thirteen <laughs> and then Colossians two nine and Matthews twenty five twenty nine. So, um, again, for from his fullness, Jesus was sinless, full of God, and whole. So, Colossians 1 and 19, I'm not going to read because we just read that. But it talks about um, how he was full of God um, and how it pleased God to be within him. We're going to jump to Matthew right now. Matthew 25 and 29. So Matthew's 25, 29. Sorry I'm so far off. Um, for to everyone who was, I'm sorry, for to everyone who has will, more be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even that he has will be taken. I'm sorry, even what he has will be taken away. So, um, let me read that one more time, guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> To everyone who has will more be given, and he will have an abundance. From the one who has not, even what he has will be taken. So that abundance is the fullness of um, Jesus, which is the fullness of God. Which is, of course, peace, love, joy, all that. Um, moving on to Ephesians. So we have Ephesians 1.23, which I enjoy that scripture a lot. And it says, um, I'm going to start at verse 22, though. He put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Um, then we're going to go to 3.19, still in Ephesians. 3.19 reads, um, you can't see it. So, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with the fullness of God. And 4.13 reads, Until we all attain to the unity of the faith of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the mature, I'm sorry, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So, let's go to Colossians. I guess I'll read 119 again. So, Colossians 119 again reads, For in him all the fullness of God was pleased, sorry. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And then going to 2.9. For in him the whole fullness of the deity dwells bodily. So we understand that the fullness of Jesus is actually the fullness of God. Um, moving on to where it says we have all received. This might be a full part video guys because we're literally... 30 minutes away from ending, and we've only gotten, basically, completing all of verse 18. 
uh, 9 to 18. So, yeah. Again, you can download the printable to get all of the information. But um, we have all received. So, through Christ, we have gained and obtained a blessing. Through Christ, we have gained and obtained a blessing. And the last portion of that verse. The last portion of that verse reads, uh, grace upon grace. So this is an emphasis of grace received through Christ by God, not the grace we, we give, but that of a divine grace from the Father that is continuous, never exhausted, without interruption, and limitless. So... Grace received... Through Christ, by God, it's divine, continuous, never exhausted, which means that we're going to continuously again get grace, without interruption. So if I upset God, um, he's not going to remove his grace so easily and limitless there's no limit to how much grace i can receive i have acts 15 11 as a cross reference and also second peter 3 18 so again grace upon grace this is grace received through christ by god it's divine continuous never exhausted without interruption and limitless again cross references we're going to dive into our acts 15 and 11 right now so 15 11 but we believe that we will be saved through the grace of the lord just as they will so the grace of who the lord jesus which that grace comes through him by way of God. Um, and then 2 Peter 3.18. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. Okay. Moving on to 17. For the law was given through Moses. That alone is powerful. I mean, so I'm going to underline the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Sorry if you guys hear any TV sounds. Uh, my siblings are outside. I mean, out in the living room. Sorry if you couldn't see that either. But, um, so I underlined the law was given through Moses, and then I underlined grace and truth come through, came through Jesus Christ. So, 17. What color do I want to use? I don't know why I just sung that. <laughs> Pay me no mind, guys. <laughs> I'm going to use this blue here. And so you guys can see the bleed through on this. Um, it's not bad. It's, it only gets bad when you're pushing down on the actual page. Like here, I had to go over it twice. But um, other than that, there's really no terrible bleed through at all, including with the pen, which is why I like using a journaling Bible and these kind of um, writing utensils. I want to use this lime green. I think I'm just all about green today. Okay. 
So the law was given through Moses. Basically, through Moses, God gave man laws and regulations to understand their sin in his sight. His commands and instructions were given through Moses. There was essentially no margin for error. The old covenant was to be a tool by which man could come into fellowship with God, but it was imperfect. So again, this is the old covenant, which you can read in Exodus 20, um, 1 through 7, right? 1 through 17, sorry. So... Old Covenant and Perfect. Laws, Commands, Regulations, No Room for Error. And again, see Exodus 20, 1 through 17, which is all about the Ten Commandments. I'm not going to read that because it's Ten Commandments. Um, but then we're going to move on to the second portion where it says grace and truth um, came through Jesus Christ. So basically, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ. Through Christ, God displayed, I'm sorry, through Christ, God displaced the law of Moses and gave man undeserved, unmerited, and unearned favor, love, and faithfulness. We have margin forever. This is the new covenant. So, new covenant. margin for error and when i mean when i say that i mean like um something that you don't know not a sin that you knowingly commit um this is like something really minuscule that you do but don't really realize that you're doing it because it's a habit um something like that because i know back then i mean people were getting smite left with fire and falling straight like dead immediately stoning and all that that stuff so i'm glad we don't have that these days um we have that margin forever because he gave us undeserved, unmerited, and unearned favor, grace, love, and all of that. So, um, margin for error. Receive love, faithfulness. unearned favor um, and with this I have Psalms 119 142 is a verse we have Romans 5 and 21 and then 2nd Corinthians 8 and 9 So let's quickly just read um, Psalms 119, 142. Let's go to the Psalms. Sing a hymn or two. Um, and 142 is the verse. Psalms 119. Hey, you can't see that. Okay, so we're in Psalms 119, and the verse is 142. Your righteousness is righteous forever, and your law is true. Then we have Romans 5, 21. Actually, let me fold this in so that I can uh, get that used to being folded correctly. Um, Romans 5, 21. And pay all this no mind. I actually did this with... Um, I can't remember her name. Oh my god. Oh, I can't remember her name. But she is a creator of Soul Scripts. I did this with her with her program that she has on her blog. I'll leave a link to check that out. 
but um, Romans 5, 21. It reads, so that as sin reigned in death, grace also might reign through righteousness, leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Um, moving on to the last one, which is 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 8 and 9. Which is here, 2 Corinthians 8 and 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for our sake he became poor, so that you, by his poverty, might become rich. So, again, this goes into the whole humanity thing with him coming to the, um, the world and flesh. Um, but that's that. And then, verse 18. No one has ever seen God, the only God, who is at the Father's side. He has made him known. So, what I underlined was no one has ever seen God. Is this in frame? Because, you know, I'm, I'm a little slow with the getting in frame. No one has ever seen God. Um, I underlined the only God who is at the Father's side. He has made him known. I'm underlining the whole verse, but in parts, instead of as one thing, because um, there's a lot to it. So, we're done with this sticky note. <laughs> I'm going to have to stick this sticky note somewhere. Can I stick it here? Yes, I can. And this will most likely be the last one because we are only 15 minutes. We only have 15 minutes left. <laughs> so, yep. <laughs> so, moving on to 18. Verse 18. Let's get some color on the page. Let's use this gorgeous purple. No one has ever seen God... I'm obsessed with gray, so I'm going to use this for who is at the father's side. Um, no, no pink. Let's use this peach for the only God. And so the last thing, because the camera cut off. Um, I just underlined it with this color here. So, verse 18, no one has seen God, only the God. I'm sorry, no one has ever seen God. Um, our physical bodies cannot handle seeing God face to face. We'd be consumed by him, no longer able to live. Moses asked to, and God told him no. Isaiah could not even handle his vision of God. So, our physical bodies just can't handle his presence. Cross references I have are Exodus 33, verses 18 to 20, Isaiah 6, 1 through 7, 1 John 4, 12. Again, I have so many cross references, but I'm not going to state them all. The only God, okay? So for that, actually, let's quickly just read these cross references. So Exodus 33 18 to 20. It's on this page over here. So Exodus 13. I'm sorry, Exodus 33, 18 and 20. So um, 18 starts, it says, Moses said, please show me your glory. And he said, he being God, I will make all my goodness pass before you and will proclaim 
before you my name, the Lord. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But, he said, he being God, you cannot see my face, for a man shall not see me and live. So, if he would have saw him, he would have died. Going to Isaiah... Isaiah 6, 1 through 7. Um, here it is. So, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim, which had six wings. With two he covered his face, and two he covered his feet. With two he flew, and one called to another and said, Holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The holy earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken the tongues from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold... Then, I'm sorry, behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Now, if you really know the story um, of this, we know that Isaiah actually, um, I believe with his vision, he had passed out, if I wasn't mistaken. But um, that's that. Moving on. I'm going to go back because I don't have much time. Like, I literally don't, which is crazy. So, um, the only God. I'm just going to write the cross references out and you guys can just um, look them up yourself. But for the only God, Jesus is fully God and he's fully man. He is a perfect declaration of the unseen God. Jesus is the only way we can see God until we get to heaven. So, Jesus is fully God and fully man. We see God through him. Until we get to heaven. Cross reference for that is first John four nine. Verse eighteen which is the part where it says, who is at the Father's side. I'm so sorry this was not in frame. Again, the only God, Jesus is fully God and fully man. We see God through him until we get to heaven. 1 John 4, 9. Um, who is at the Father's side. Jesus with God, um, sorry, Jesus was with God before the creation of earth. And he was with him when he ascended back to heaven. This also denotes the intimate relationship between God and his son. So. Intimacy. Denotes intimacy between. Jesus and God. Jesus was always. At his side before creation and after his ascension I'm having a brain spasm ascension and while on earth Um, also, the use of is, which it says, who is at the Father's side. So, the use of is means that this is a constant and continual association and close following between the two that happened before creation when Jesus came to earth and when he ascended. So, again, Jesus was there at the beginning of the creation of earth with God, um, him, the Holy Spirit, and God created the earth, created everything that was there. And then, while he was on earth, he was constantly, consistently praying, doing the will of God. And then, after he resurrected... He got to um, ascend back to be with the Father. Sorry if I'm speaking a little bit fast. I only have like a few minutes left. But um, the last part here, which says, And he has made him known 
Um, basically, we don't have to wonder about the nature and personality of God. Jesus has declared it with both his teaching and his life. He demonstrated, brought revelation of, and revealed God to us through his being. So, Jesus... demonstrated brought revelation and revealed God to us cross references are Matthew 11:27 Luke 10:22 First John of course 2:24 and then 5:20 So that is it you guys for part 2 of this study um we got a few ways through but there will be part 3 on Tuesday for the live if you see the pre-recorded video then that'll be Thursday but um that's it for this study I hope you guys are enjoying this study as much as I am I just love John. Um, you see that we are getting so much out of it. It's a lot of note taking. So bear with me. Again, download the printable if you want all of the notes um, beforehand. And I'll see you guys in the next session. Bye.